Today, we're going to talk about the intermediate trap. Okay, so, hmm, why do I call it the intermediate trap? Well, the answer is because 100%, absolutely, positively, undeniably, it is an intermediate trap that just about everyone runs into. All right, let's start with an example. Now, imagine you're building an application that includes a form of sorts. And as part of this form, you want to add the ability to mark a particular reply within a thread as the best one. And when you do this, of course, you can then elevate that one reply to the top of the thread and then feature it, very similar to what you might see with the Stack Overflow or even Laracast. All right, so here's our demo. I've set up a post request, and notice we're going to accept some kind of identifier for a reply, and that will then hit a best reply controller. Great, no problem here whatsoever. So this is an invocable controller, and that's fine. We then update the reply, that's fine. And then we dispatch an event, and that's fine too. But I'm gonna call this the intermediate trap. Now. I'm going to warn you, this will annoy so many of you, and uh, you're going to complain, and you're going to post to social media, but I'm sticking to it. This right here, so, so often, ends up being the intermediate trap. All right, so here's why. Think about it. Uh, this uh, action, and, and many actions just like this, involve more than just updating some kind of column within the database, right? There are other things that need to take place as a result of marking a reply as best. All right, so here's just an example. What if the user who had their reply marked as best gets some kind of bonus, right? Like maybe you have XP on your website, very similar to Laracast or even Stack Overflow. So if your reply is marked as best, you get some kind of bonus. You get a thousand experience points, right? Uh, maybe when a reply is marked as best, we need to record activity. And that way, if you look at my activity feed, you can see, oh, Jeffrey Way wrote a reply and it was marked as best on October 3rd, right? Uh, maybe when my reply is marked as best, I receive an email, a notification, right? Maybe, um, I don't know, they're, they're, that, that's the whole point. There's a bunch of different things that could take place as the result of just a simple action like this. All right, so in your head, you're an intermediate developer and you think, we can't put all of that in the controller. That That's a mess. That violates solid. Instead, what we need to do is handle the primary action. And in this case, the primary action is to update the reply. Everything else is a side effect. And what have we learned? If it's a side effect, we should register an event listener to handle it. And that's what we do here. So we fire an event, best reply marked. All right, so now how do we handle it? Well, we have to register any number of event listeners. All right, so check this out. If I open my sidebar, well, I can go into my listeners directory and yeah, sure enough, I have three listener classes. Now, if you're familiar with Laravel, you know that Laravel will automatically scan this listeners directory and it'll search for a handle method and then pass through the corresponding event based upon the type that you specify here. So we refer to this as automatic uh, discovery. Is that right? Yeah, automatic discovery. I think that's right. Uh, and yeah, you know what? No problem there. That's really cool. So in this case, we have an activity listener. So when a reply is marked as best, it looks like we grab the user who wrote the reply and we create some kind of uh, activity for them. And of course, you can imagine at some point on a settings page or a profile page, we could loop over all of the activity for the user and display it uh, on the page, which is cool. All right, next we have an experience listener. And this one, again, listens for when a reply is marked as best, and it looks like we increment the user's experience by a thousand. Now in this case, yeah, we're just updating a number on the user's table. Uh, you might want that to be its own table that has uh, a description and stuff like that so that you can chronologically display every time uh, experience was awarded. But yeah, we're keeping it simple here, and we're just updating uh, a number. And then finally, we have a notification listener. When a reply is marked as best, notify the person who created the reply uh, to let them know, hey, you wrote a reply, and later the owner of the thread marked that reply as best. Congratulations. All right, so it looks good, right? It sounds good. Now, what about 
testability. Well, here's our first clue. Take a look at this. If I go down to my test directory, I have a feature called mark best reply test. And you can see I have a handful of tests here and they're all connected. Have a look. It marks the best reply on the thread. Great. It records activity. Great. It awards experience. Great. It notifies the reply owner. Great. And they're all grouped within the same file. Now, what I would say is this is a huge win because the alternative is, think about it, you would have a best reply controller test.php file. You'd have an activity listener test file. You'd have an experience listener test, and you would have a notification listener test. And again, I'm just going to keep calling this the intermediate trap because it all sounds good. You think about it. Oh, we are better adhering to the open close principle because now in the future, if something else needs to take place as the result of marking a reply as best, I don't have to return to that controller and update it and risk breaking, uh, breaking some of the functionality. Instead, I can write new code. I can register a brand new event listener and uh, add whatever functionality I need to. And that's a smart way to go, right? Well, yeah, and sometimes and it feels that way and we think it. But the reality is a year from now when you come back to this, it sucks. I'm sorry. I know that's not the uh, it's not a great word to use, but it's the first word that comes to my mind, because really all I want to know is what happens when a reply is marked as best. But I, I can't find it. I can go to the controller and I can say, all right, well, we update this, but then we dispatch an event. And if I'm using a good IDE, yeah, maybe I can command click here to review all of the listeners uh, for that particular event. But yeah, I just have to go through all of them. All right, let's take a look here. Okay, it looks like we update activity. What else? Command click again. Okay, it looks like experience is registered. It's just a horrible experience, at least in my mind. Now, rules are meant to be broken and guidelines are meant to be broken. So am I saying you should never follow this approach? Absolutely not. Uh, I find events especially useful when you are communicating, I don't know, across boundaries. Uh, maybe I'm building a package that you can then pull in and I need a way to communicate to you. Well, that that's an incredible uh, situation where I can dispatch an event from my package. You can listen to it from your application and then respond to it. These are situations that are entirely disconnected and can be incredibly useful. But yeah, in this case, do I need to separate all the actions that take place as part of marking a reply as best? Not really. And you know what? Most of the time, what you're going to find out is you created an event for the sole purpose of not writing one or two lines of code within your controller. Okay, so let's fix this, at least how I would go about fixing it. And like I said, we already have a huge win in that I have a dedicated file called mark best reply. And if it makes sense for my test, I think it makes sense for the actual code. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna come back to my controller and instead of dispatching an event, I'm gonna comment that out right now. Now, of course, we gotta be careful because if I come back and I then run all of my tests and I'll just do this inline, of course, everything's going to fail because we've removed that functionality. Great. So let's do this one at a time. If I assert that a reply is marked as best, well, this part should still work because that's handled directly in the controller. But how about this next one? It records activity. Well, of course, that's going to fail because we are no longer dispatching an event. I will go up to my app directory and create a new folder called Actions. Now, I'll, I'll warn you, don't worry about the name too much. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. <laughs> this was kind of an eye opener for me. Oh, there are no rules. I can just name this whatever makes sense for me. And if I want to follow common conventions, then great. But if I want to call this floozy flues, as long as it makes sense to me and my team, then it doesn't matter. So yeah, in the past, uh, people would call this scripts. You know, um, they, they might have called it use cases. Now it's very common to call them actions. It doesn't matter. Sometimes there are slight differences between uh, these patterns and approaches, but mostly they're pretty similar. Okay, so our first action is what? Well, the test is giving us a clue. Mark best reply. Let's just stick with that. All right, create a new PHP class called mark best reply. Now, should we call it action? Should we add that suffix? Again, this comes down to whatever you want to do. Generally, and you know what? 
I'll admit I'm kind of inconsistent here because my controllers always receive a suffix, but for an action, I just don't like it. Uh, we already have an actions folder, so it feels a little redundant to me. But again, it's it's totally inconsistent because I don't follow this convention for my controllers. Anyways, that's just how it goes. I'm going to leave it as Mark best reply. All right, so we have a plain old PHP class, and I will add a handle method here, and we'll give that a format. Yeah, again, don't get hung up on the name of the method. You could call it execute. You could call it run. You could make this an invocable class. It doesn't matter. Just pick a convention and stick to it and then and then be on your way. Don't think about it too much. Okay, cool. So now let's go into my controller. Best reply controller. We're no longer dispatching an event, so I can get rid of this. And instead, I'm going to inject our action. And this is just standard Laravel behavior. If I type a class here, Laravel will do its best to resolve it out of the container uh, and then pass it into the action for us. All right, so we're gonna have mark best reply and I'll call it action. All right, so now I can say action handle. Okay, so now I want a sanity check. So here's what I'll do. Let's return to that class and within the handle method, I'll just say die and dump. Hello there. We just want to make sure that we are hitting uh, this code. All right, so let's rerun that single test. And sure enough, I die and dump hello there. It is working. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is return to my controller, and I'll take this bit of code and move it over. Switch back, paste it in. All right, we're going to accept a reply. So we need to return to our controller and pass that in. And now, yeah, let's do this. Let's go back to the very first test, run it, and that's passing. Great. So if nothing else, we've migrated that part over to a dedicated action. So now we're going to move the activity portion to the action, and that's currently failing. So in the sidebar, I'm going to visit activity listener. I'm going to take this code right here, and I'm going to move it into my action. And at least to start, I'm just going to throw it all in the handle method, and then later I can uh, extract a handful of methods. So I will paste that in here. We no longer have an event, so I can change it to this right here. All right, let's rerun the test. And we get green. Excellent. All right, so now I can delete this listener entirely. And it's almost like buying a boat. The first time you create the listener, you feel good. And the second time when you delete the listener, you feel even better. Okay, cool. Let's keep going. So back to our test. Notice I keep coming back to the test because they are guiding me about what I need to work on next. Okay, it wards experience. I run it. And of course, right now that's failing. So I go into my listener. And yeah, it's, it's almost like I am de-engineering this code. But trust me, from personal experience, it makes the code better. I don't need to be so clever all the time. Sometimes it's better to just group it within the same file so that I can trigger it from anywhere. And then in the future, if I need to know what happens as part of marking a reply as best, I don't have to browse and access a half dozen different files. I can go to a single action to review it. It's great. All right, so I'm gonna copy this. I will delete experience listener. I will come back here and I will nest it right here. All right. All right, let's give it a shot. Rerun that test. And now we're at green. So good. All right, next step. Back to our test. And we have one more in this example. It notifies the reply owner. And currently that's failing. All right. It looks like we created a notification listener for the sole purpose of handling uh, this behavior. So I will copy that, delete it, move it over. And I'm going to paste it in. Cool. All right, update this. And let's see, did we do that correctly? Rerun the test and we're at green. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is run the entire test suite. And now that's returning green as well. Okay, so at this point, our functionality is working. We can just make little tweaks uh, to improve readability. And I'll show you what I typically like to do. My handle method is the entry point that then defers to um, other methods within the class that have more readable names. So for example, this section right here might be record activity. This one right here might be award experience. And this one right here might be uh, notify user or something like that. All right, let's do it. Let's extract a method called record activity. All right, rerun the tests. Always rerun the tests, by the way. I know you think you're clever and you're not making mistakes. Trust me, you're making mistakes every second of the way. From personal experience, you're making mistakes every second of the way. All right, next one. 
Um, how about award experience? All right, rerun the tests. Good. And then finally, this one can be notify user. All right, so check this out. I know it's somewhat superfluous to extract these methods, but you know what? I think it really helps uh, when it comes to readability, especially a year from now. When I return to this action, I can see, all right, well, what is involved as part of marking a reply as best is updating the reply, recording activity, awarding experience, and notifying the user. And it just makes for a more relaxing experience versus, again, the alternative of, all right, take a look at this event listener and then that event listener and then what happens over here and you just become exhausted and all we're dealing with is a simple little feature. It's just not worth it. Trust me, it's just not worth it. But yeah, uh, keep in mind that doesn't preclude you eventually firing an event here. If there truly is something that is a side effect of this and you want to register a listener for it, that's fine. It's not like I'm banning I can't ban anything, but in my own projects, it's not like I'm banning the use of events and listeners. Absolutely not. But for what I call primary actions, and a primary action to me is not just updating the reply. It is all of this. Um, yeah, for primary actions, well, action classes uh, are the way to go. And you know what? You know how I know that? Because the test I created was called mark best reply. So when I wrote my test, it made sense to group these together. But when I write the actual code, I'm going to split them up into a half dozen different files. Why? For for some sense of, of um, adherence to solid, for some sense of being a professional developer? Absolutely not. I'm not doing it. Okay, so all of our tests are passing. We rerun it just to confirm that we're not crazy. And yeah, think about it. Six months from now, when I come back to this application, if I'm curious about the things that the application can do, I can now visit this actions directory. And in real life, this is going to be a long list of actions that describe all of the things uh, my project can do. It's so comforting. That's the best word I can think of. It's comforting to know, oh, if I need to figure out what happens as a result of this, if I have a ticket to add some kind of functionality or to fix a bug, I know exactly where to go to make that fix. And that's it. That's all I got for you. So notice in this example, our action is just a plain old PHP class. Now, in your learning, you might come across dedicated packages. You can use those. Uh, in, in many cases, they add additional functionality. They allow the action to be maybe dispatched as a job or to be triggered as a command or something like that. You can use those if you want. Generally, I don't. Uh, I really like the simplicity of creating a simple class and triggering it. And if I want to uh, throw this onto a queue, I can still do that uh, relatively easy. But of course, you can do whatever you want. All right, so let me know. What do you think about this approach? What do you think about firing an event and then registering a bunch of listeners in your application? If you've done that, Two years down the road, how did you feel about that decision? If you've been using actions for a long time, how do you feel about that decision? Uh, let me know in the comments, and we'll keep the conversation going. My name is Jeffrey Way. I'll see you later.